Well, welcome to another special episode of the Bring Your Own Grief Network. As always, I am your humbled host, R. Glenn Kelly. You know as well as I do, grief healing is some of the hardest work we've ever done. And it is work, work we must do. Now, none of us who have lost a loved one will ever completely heal, but we will move forward, must move forward to a life of peace and purpose with our loved one very much a part of who we are. So, if you are going through loss and looking for something which might help you get your arms wrapped around the whole grief healing thing, you won't want to miss this episode. Your grief case. A healing concept which has brought me a long way down my path to hope and healing. Let's get straight to it then. You, my friend, are carrying a grief case and you probably know the very second you latched onto it. You certainly didn't ask for the grief case, didn't want one, and like me, probably never thought about having one either. Absolutely no one does. Yet once you have it, no matter how heavy and burdensome it seems at first, the grief case should be considered as one of the most important tools in moving forward towards hope and healing in your future. My grief case was handed to me by someone I didn't even know before that moment. Probably yours too. And somewhere in my shock and confusion, I wasn't even really sure what it was that I took hold of. All I knew was that at some point after the loss, I noticed I was carrying some crippling new weight and my mind reeled over the confusion of what to do with it. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't leave it behind. I tripped over it, dragged it behind me. It made returning to work and socializing incredibly difficult, if not somewhat impossible for a time. I knew also that I would carry this new grief case with me for the rest of my life, but I was not aware of it at first. I was not aware that it would actually become much heavier over the days and months to come. Now, let me tell you, some people that carry it that weight can stay with them for years. So, that said, besides me, who gets a grief case? Well, anyone who has experienced the traumatic death of someone they love deeply and dearly. The deeper the love, the heavier the grief case from the start. And just what is the grief case, you ask? Well, it's not really a physical object, but it is very real. In short, Think first that the grief case is the actual word grief itself. By the way, the word grief comes from the Latin word gravar, which means to make heavy. How's that? Our grief makes us heavy. In our society, the word grief is used so often and so casually that it's become the default description of all the painful emotions felt after the passing of a loved one. Personally, in my grief work with myself and with others, I will use the word grief ad nauseum. Even for those of us who have lost someone, it's just the go-to word for what we're going through. So I am not faulting the word. Yet grief itself is not a human feeling, is it? It's simply an easy placeholder for the numerous emotions of grief felt, many of them, but not all, caustic and possibly harmful, such as anger, guilt, anguish, fear, despair, confusion, and so many more. Now, if you were to ask me after my loss how I was feeling at the moment, I might have said I felt shocked, confused, frightened, or sad. And since no two people ever process their deep feelings of loss in the same way, another griever might respond by saying they feel anger, confusion, or guilt. That's because, of course, they will not experience the same emotions at the same time as I, if at all and certainly not at equal intensities. One thing you won't hear someone say is, I feel grief. Think about it. If I asked you after your loss, or even right now, how you feel, would you respond by saying you feel grieved? No, you won't. Simply because grief is not a feeling. 
It's a descriptor or a word used to index the multitude of feelings or emotions one might feel after a loss. Now further, the feelings within grief are many individual emotions that can come and go in articulating waves with no prescribed timetable. Yet each can be just as deeply painful and disconcerting as the other. So where does the concept of the grief case come from? If grief is going to be the commonly used word that contains all the emotions felt within the loss of a loved one, then we should darn well use it just that way as a container, a carrier of the emotions. And if you are going to be toting it around with you for the rest of your life, then you might as well consider it something you're familiar with, a briefcase, except it holds our grief. So henceforth, let's now call it your briefcase. Now, just like a true briefcase, it not only can be used to hold our emotions, but also to efficiently organize and work through them as well. We have to work through them on our journey to hope and healing. So here we go. You experienced your loss and were handed a grief case. You had no choice but to take it and imagine it cuffed to your wrist with no way to remove it. It will be with you until that day long from now when you see your lost loved one again. But think now about sitting down at a table and placing your grief case in front of you. Visualize it. You open the lid and look inside. There you find a jumbled stack of manila folders lying at the bottom of the case, which represent your grief emotions. Get the visual? The folders are your files of feelings from the loss and each folder is chock thick and heavy, all in disarray with papers almost spilling out either end. It's a mess at the start. And the labels on your folders might be similar to mine, but mine say shock, confusion, anger, guilt, longing, fear, and so many more. I have a lot of folders. But just like my briefcase, look across into that pocket in the lid, the one with the two snaps that hold it against the lid. There you will see a single folder at first, labeled unconditional love. It too is thick, but it isn't a mess when you pull it out to take a look at it. It's neat and it's very well organized. Listen, this folder holds your undying love and memories for the one who passed. Now, just holding the folder will make you feel a little more at peace. As a matter of fact, if you pay attention to your spirit, it will actually urge you to begin working through the other folders, the nasty ones on the bottom. That aside, maybe the first folder of emotions to attack at the bottom of the grief case is the one labeled confusion. At least that's where I'd start if I had to do it all over again. The folder of confusion, like every other one that lies in chaos at the bottom of your case, will be stuffed with disorganized papers or thoughts, some of which may contain some true information, but can also have the erroneous, untrue, and redundant thoughts that often hit us hard after the loss of a loved one. Let me break those down for you real quick. Erroneous, untrue, and redundant. Erroneous thoughts are knee-jerk responses based on how you reacted in your past to other emotional events. You've been through other things before that left you shocked, angry, afraid, or whatever, and you might have a tendency to respond based on those experiences, even though they have nothing to do with this one. Make sense? Those emotional responses are not appropriate, but they are willing to jump in and help, even if inappropriate, right? Now, untrue thoughts are those that are basically false and unfounded. Now, these can be the most prevalent for some when the cause of death is unknown. The mind has a tendency to fill in the blanks when stressed, and sometimes it will fill them in with things that just are unfounded and untrue. Then, the redundant thoughts, those that exist in other grief emotions already. They can be found in your other emotional folders, but early in grief, when confusion and shock are overwhelming, they often reproduce themselves. Loneliness makes you angry sometimes. Guilt makes you feel shame. Similar but different, right? Confusion makes you feel despondent. You get it. Redundancy. Now, if you want to get a little deep, know that these folders of emotions get filled up by your subconscious mind. 
and the subconscious is innocently attempting to act on your behalf without your conscious control or even your approval. That's what our subconscious does, right? There is no malice. It is simply trying to give you all the information it assumes could be needed in a traumatic or stressful event. Unfortunately, even without ill will, sometimes the subconscious is absolutely not always helpful in bereavement. So let's get back to the confusion folder and how you can start to process that feeling, the emotion, and lighten the load there. After that, you can begin to use the same methodology on each emotional folder. So when you open the folder of confusion and scan over the very first piece of paper, everything you read on that page indicates it obviously belongs, for example, in the loneliness folder. So you simply find the loneliness folder and inside you see the very same thought already there. Ball up this redundant notion that came out of confusion and just toss it away. Back again to the confusion folder. The next paper, or thought, seems to have a lot to do with guilt. So you find the guilt folder. You search through it and this time don't find the same one. Well, don't deal with it now. Put it in the guilt folder and get back to working through confusion. That is paramount early on. However, there can be times where you deal with things right off the bat. Let's say you pull something from the confusion folder that obviously goes in the anger folder. Yet while scanning through it, you can easily see that there's no reason at all to feel anger for whatever it refers to. In fact, you can see no reason to feel any emotion for this issue at all. Ball it up. Throw it away. So, continuing through the confusion folder, eventually you come to the last piece of paper. See, over time, you've removed all the others, each one relocated to another, more proper folder, or it was discarded entirely. Now this last page, or thought, or feeling, reads like it's only an outline of all the jumble the folder once held. So you don't want to throw that away. See, you can never empty any emotional folder entirely. These remaining thoughts on just a single sheet, if you will, remain in the Manila folder and are a part of who you are becoming in your journey towards healing. It's your compassion, your remembrance of the unconditional love you have for your lost loved one. As a matter of fact, you can now take the folder of confusion and put it in the back pocket of the grief case with the unconditional love folder. They belong together now. Hey. You have such a long way to go, though, and this being known as grief work, you will be at this for the rest of your life. Sorry, we don't pull punches here. But with confusion gone, you can now begin to work with the other folders without the cloud of confusion reigning over your head. Confusion first, right? That's the best way to begin the journey. Now, as each emotional folder is resolved to its fullest possible, it too can be moved to the back pocket with unconditional love. However, again, not all emotions within grief can be completely resolved. Some may never be down to a single page and move back with the unconditional love. Do not let that stop you from moving forward through the grief work. Every folder can become lighter and better organized. Along the way, you will remove the erroneous, untrue, and redundant thoughts making even the yet-to-be-resolved folders less of a burden on every aspect of your life. Reminder, and I can't say this enough, the folders of emotions that come with the tragic loss of someone you love so dearly will never go away completely. Again, once experienced, they will become a part of who you are, a part of your new normal, if you will. And regardless, Working through the grief case is not going to be easy, no matter how simple I seem to have explained it here. In reality, the folders or emotions will not wait until you decide to have time to tend to them. They will not be gracious enough to let you tackle them one at a time either. Emotions will come in waves and early in grief, these waves will seem unending and unrelenting. They will not care where you are, what you are doing or why you are doing it. This is when the folders of emotions will demand you tend to them. Use what we talked about. Find erroneous, untrue, and redundant thoughts. Organize them. But be warned, and yes, there are many warnings, 
The emotions or folders do not always present themselves just one at a time. While each emotion will require great effort and resolve just to begin to grasp, grief emotions are not normally very kind. They will frequently come two, three, or more emotions at a time, and each will scream for your immediate attention. One moment it could be the painful but innocent feelings of longing for a lost loved one, and the next moment it is joined by the dark emotion of intense anger. Very soon, the folder of regret appears and wants attention while you are still frantically leafing through the first two. It's in this chaos of unfamiliar and random emotional waves that the griever experiences a great deal of trouble in beginning the journey of moving forward. It is imperative, then, that you get your hands around these emotions as quickly as possible, and when the waves come, use your grief case to help handle the emotions. See the waves of grief coming. Hold your breath, let the wave wash over you, and then find your feet again with the grief case. Now, when you are well down your path to healing, the waves will come farther and farther apart and in less intensity, trust me. But do not forget your grief case work during these times. Take your breaks and find peace when you can, but the grief case is always with you. Anytime you can work to lighten it further, you will rid yourself of unresolved grief something we don't want with us for the rest of our lives. And listen, there is just no way anyone can walk through your particular grief case with you. No two people ever grieve alike, nor may they experience the same emotions. One may have anger while another does not. Even if both have anger and grief, the intensity of that anger will certainly be at differing amounts. You are not alone, though. There are many of us out there who have been through the fire and maybe just a little further down the path of hope and healing. Look to support groups, professional and peer-to-peer. -peer. No two of us have been through the exact same thing, but there is nothing like sitting with another who has experienced the loss of a loved one. And take heart. Eventually, the majority of emotions or folders will find their way to share space with unconditional love in the back pocket of the grief case. As that happens, you will eventually find room inside to fill it with some wonderful aspects of a lighter heart. Start now, and soon you will have plenty of space to pack joy, peace, and purpose. Maybe some flip-flops and suntan lotion, too. So, that's it for this special episode, The Grief Case, brought to you by the Bring Your Own Grief Network, the place where you can bring your own pains, bring your own questions, bring your own confusions, and bring your own grief. And hey, don't forget to like us on Facebook and on YouTube, both found under the Bring Your Own Grief Network. Join or subscribe as well. Lots at both sites to offer. Regardless, I am R. Glenn Kelly, proud father to my angel son, Jonathan Taylor Kelly, and we both wish you peace and purpose.